Oh Fighter! Hey everybody, Eska from Plot Bigger Games here. Many of you have asked about the fighters in the Combo Fighter, how they play and how, they, how they're different from each other. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to take a look on uh, all of the individual fighters in the game, look at their cards and the distributions, their signature combos, their special powers and so on, to give you a, an idea of how they, how they differ and how they, they play specifically. So, first off, we're going to start with Boris Wolfram, the Ukrainian miner. So let's take a look at his cards. So Boris has three different attack moves. He has the laser flash, which, which is pretty fast. You see an initiative of seven. That is quite fast for this slow brawler. But it deals zero damage when you use it as an opener and two damage in a combo. So it's not a, it's not a super powerful card, but it's useful if uh, Boris, Boris wants to win um, an opening move playing red against red. He then has his headbutt move. It, uh, it hits pretty hard with a damage of 4 and a combo damage of 3, but you see it's slower, so that's the trade-off here. It's only uh, initiative 4. And uh, then finally has his Thunderclap. That's a whooping 7 damage uh, as an opening move and 3 in a combo, but it's super slow. It's the second slowest attack in the entire game so far. It's only initiative 7, so it's going to be difficult to hit with that card. Um, and at defense moves, he has uh, his block, he has seven of those cards, and it's in his starting hand, you can see. It's zero damage, both as an opener and in, in, in a combo, but it's it's a solid card nevertheless. We have shoulder tackle, and that is like block, except for it does not lead into any of the attack moves, and it deals three damage if you can use it in a combo. So here is the trade-off is, do you want to open with that card and, and kind of waste the blue card, or do you want to save it for a combo where it actually deals deals damage, and this that that choice becomes even more apparent in his six priority cards, the rush cards. You see, it's a zero damage card when you open with it, but it's five damage uh, in a combo, and it can string off of itself, so you can actually string together multiple rushes for a lot of damage. Then he has two footwork techniques. He has a circle and a step back. And the step back, you'll see, sets up the rush card. Uh, you'll notice that it combos into the rush right there. So those are, are, are Boris, Boris's uh, basic techniques. And his starting hand, you'll see, is laser flash, it's thunderclap, block, shoulder tackle, and circle. So uh, as an opening move, he has a couple of choices. He could he can open with Thunderclap, that's a very bold move, a lot of players would probably expect that, so that's a, that's a tricky one to open with. Boris Wolfram's signature combos, he has a, three signature combos like everybody else, and his signature combos, they begin with blue cards. So he will begin with a defensive card if he wants to play a signature combo. And you see he has, also like everybody else, the first combo is in his starting hand, so this drill and blast, he can actually open with that card. Um, then he has the key of Coltrane, which allows him to uh, make something out of uh, a rush card if he uses in S as an opener. You see this combo would normally deal 0 plus 0 plus 2 damage, so you actually get a bonus of 4 damage, or 8, uh, sorry, 6 if you play the, the, the Moxie version. And then he has the Ukrainian hangover here. His special power, though, is this one. It's the Uranium Capsule. It says, before drawing cards to refill your hand, you may discard three blue cards to flip this card. So if you can save up three blue cards before refilling your hand, you can discard those, and boom, you can power up and be powered by radiation. So for the rest of the game, whenever you deal damage, you will be an extra two damage. Obviously, that's, that's very powerful if you, can, uh, if you can activate that early on in the game. So how do you play Boris Wolfram in Combo Fighter? Well, the way I like to play him is I like to play him quite def defensively, meaning I open with blue a lot of times, and that means I run into uh, uh, some damage, but I, I really like to, to, to keep his defensive stance while, while I build up a combo. He can build up some very powerful combos, some of the most powerful combos in the game. He can do a thunderclap headbutt, 
step back and double rush for example for 20 damage that's pretty significant so uh, while I build up that combo I play blue cards because keep if you keep defending your opponent will waste their red cards they will get nothing out of the blue cards and typically you have more blue cards than them so you can really keep defending at some point they have to you know try to sidestep your blocks using the footwork cards and boom that's when you play your your devastating combo so that's how I like to play uh, play Boris. Um, yeah, blocking, building up a combo, boom. Now let's take a look at kickboxer Renny Iser. As you see, Iser has a lot of attack cards. She has twelve jabs, super fast, initiative eight. So that's a very strong opener. It does not deal a ton, a ton of damage though, but it's a pretty solid opener. And she has a cross, it deals more damage, but it's also slower. The jab leads into the cross, and the cross leads into the kick. The kick is her strongest attack, but it's uh, initiative 4, so it's a risky opening move unless you play a really slow opponent. The kick leads into the knee. The knee is her only defense card. Uh, only defense card, it deals 0 damage, but it, 2 damage if you use it as an attack. So you can either use the knee to block an incoming attack, or you can use it as an attack yourself in a combo. She has a decent amount of yellow cards, 13. She has close distance, close distance setting up both the jab and the cross. She moves in and gets ready and then her circle card sets up the jab or the kick. So Iser has three signature combos and like everybody else she starts with the first combo in her hand. That's the Superman punch combo. Deal 6 damage and can be powered up with an extra card for a 10 damage moxie version. She has a lightning roundhouse combo and the flying dutchman combo. 11 damage combo. Her special power is adrenaline which is uh, very significant. When you land a signature combo you flip this token. So she lands let's say a superman punch and whoosh, all of a sudden she has her Rotterdam rush hour power ready. And that's power says if you empty an entire hand of five cards you may immediately draw a new hand of five cards and continue the combo. That means that you can potentially do a 10 strain combo. So how do you play Rene Isa? Isa is very good at comboing her, her cards so she can pretty much string together all of her cards. So what you want uh, to want to do is that you want to string the cards together obviously in a way that they deal the most amount of damage. So you have to be, be careful about that. And then be sure to do some signature combos to activate her Rotterdam Rush Hour. And a, a key thing when you play Rene Isa is knowing when to, to uh, activate your Rotterdam Rush Hour. Because you have this powerhouse stored up that you can activate, but you want to time it so that when your opponent's, opponent's deck is, is 15 cards down, Boom, that's when you activate it so that you can finish the fight in one go. You don't want to leave the opponent staggering if you can avoid that. Remember, if you, if you remove all the cards in the deck and the hand from your opponent right away, you knock the opponent out cold and the fight is over. So that's, that's what you do with Icer. The perfect play with her is if you can play a very early signature combo, use your rather than rush hour, then activate it again and finish the fight with the second rather than rush hour. That's just beautiful when that happens. So. Uh, this is Rennie Isaac. Now let's talk about Francisco Ferro, modeled after legendary Kyoko Shinkai fighter Gary O'Neill and also Francisco Filio. Let's take a look. So Ferro has three attack techniques. He has a punch with a fairly good initiative, the initiative value is 7. It deals 2 damage as an opener and also 2 damage in a combo. And it's in his starting hand as you see by the S there. Then he has a low kick, initiative 5. It's a 3-3 three, three damage card, also in his starting hand. And finally he has a high kick, dealing a massive 5 damage when you open with it, but it's a slow card, initiative 3. Slightly faster than Boris's Thunderclap, so in that matchup it's, it might actually be worth opening with this card. He has two defensive techniques, a soak, dealing 0-0 zero, zero damage, opening or comboing into the high kick, and a block card, also a 0 damage card, but leading into both the punch and the low kick. Two footwork techniques, step in, setting up the punch and the low kick, 
and step out, setting up the high kick. Fedor has three signature combos. He has the power punch. He begins with that in his hand. He has a bone crusher, which is a more powerful low kick. And he has the do kite mawashigiri, used by legend Gary O'Neill, which is kind of the, the inspiration for this uh, fighter. And uh, you see that the combos, the combo damages are this, or the signature combo damages are not super massive. It's five, six, seven. But if you combine it with com uh, Pharaoh's special power here, first he shows no pain, and when he when he's hit, when he takes damage, boom, he flips, and he's ready to retaliate. So he can double the damage of a single card or of an entire signature combo. So you see that the Do Kite Mawashigeri combo in the Moxie version with the retaliate power is actually 20 damage. So he can uh, he can deal a lot of damage with his uh, retaliate power. So how do you play uh, Francisco Ferro? Well, he plays a little bit like Boris Wolfram, that he meaning that he's he's a defensive guy with enough uh, blue cards to to uh, wear you, wear the opponent down. And uh, of course, his his special power, the show no pain retaliate, is super vital. And uh, when playing against Pharaoh, you got to be careful not to do chip damage, not do two damage or three damage, allowing him to flip the token and hit back with double power. Um, so, but when you play. Uh, Francisco, I like playing uh, opening with his punch cards, Initiative 7, pretty good card, unless of course you play uh, play against Rene Ice or the kickboxer with Initiative 8, or uh, super fast Grace Lee, then be careful, but otherwise, he has some solid opening cards uh, in his punch and even his, his low kick, then he takes some damage and then he's ready to, to uh, hit back. And during the game, you need to you need to save up one at least one dual kite mawashigiri because it's it's twenty damage and 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 it's doable. So um, try to do that. Of course, don't show your opponent with a smile on your face that you now have that combo. And uh, another thing that that might that, that is a little tricky. He has only four of these step out cards that you need in the in that super powerful combo, and they're not otherwise so useful. So. Uh, it is a little tricky getting that combo, but it can be done, so uh, go practice. Now it's time to take a look at Grace Lee, the bow staff wielding Kung Fu fighter. <laughs> so let's look at Grace's attack moves. She has the Snake Snap. It's an initiative six card, but as you'll see later, uh, Grace's special power is that she's fighting with a bow staff, and as long as that staff is in her hands, and she begins with that staff in her hands, she has plus three initiative. So it actually is a initiative nine card, so she's super fast. And uh, with the staff, she also deals a plus one damage on these cards. So it's actually a two, three damage card with initiative nine. So a uh, pretty solid card. She has a Tiger Slash with the same bonus, so it's really an initiative six card, so as long as she has her staff and it deals four, three damage. And here is her Phoenix Strike. When she plays this card, her staff breaks and as you see it's in her starting hand so the trick is yeah as long as she has her staff she's faster and she hits harder but you see it's tempting to play that card because it deals a lot of damage and you'll also see that it's used in a powerful signature combo but th those are her attacks she has an elbow that can be used to block or it can do two damage when used in a combo it's in her starting hand and then she has an evade move that is important for some of her combos. She has three footwork techniques, spin move that sets up the elbow, sidestep, and a swoop, a priority yellow card. See this priority symbol here, meaning that it beats other yellow cards. That sets up either the tiger slash or the phoenix strike. So if we take a look at Grace's signature combos, you see they all begin with yellow and as usual she has the first signature combo in her starting hand, the Spitting Cobra. She makes a quick spin and hits you with the staff and the elbow for 7 damage. Crouching Tiger, similar combo, and then her Swooping Phoenix combo is, uh, is really um, very vital for her gameplay. That's where she breaks her staff. Remember the the Phoenix Strike card. So you only have that one card in her deck. 
And uh, when you play the f Swooping Phoenix combo, you break your staff, but it does 15 damage, so it's an, an, a really good move uh, for finishing the game. But uh, as with the Rainy Isis, rather than Rush Out, you gotta be careful not to play too early. Uh, if you can time it perfectly so it takes the last 15 damage of your opponent's deck, then uh, more power to you. Well played. Here's a special power that we talked about. The Bow Staff, as long as she has the Phoenix Strike card in her hand, she has plus 3 initiative and deals plus 1 damage on her red cards only, mimicking her fighting with the Bow Staff. And when she breaks the staff, well, <coughs> you have to finish the fight with a broken staff. She loses her bonus. And uh, I've seen a lot of uh, beginners play that powerful combo or just simply playing the staff up front as one of your first moves. I cannot recommend that. It's, uh, it's really worth fighting with that staff as, as long as possible. Grace Lee is one of my favorite fighters to play. She's probably the strongest overall fighter. She has a good distribution of cards. She has enough blue cards to play the blocking game. She has a very good amount of footwork cards enabling her to outmaneuver fighters like Boris Wolfram or Francisco Ferro. And then she has super fast red cards. She does not deal a ton of damage always, but uh, she can if she, she uh, strings together her uh, red cards like Snake Snap, Tiger Slash, Snake Snap, Tiger Slash. That's a pretty decent combo, but of course she'll run out of red cards at some point doing that. But uh, overall she's, she's, uh, she's, a, she's really a, a good balanced fighter. And she has that uh, ace up her sleeve, her Phoenix Strike card that can hit you at any moment. So that, that's, that's something you must use uh, to your advantage. Like, luring your, the, your opponent into thinking, okay, now I play the break staff, now I play the break staff card, but, and, and then you don't play it. Kagami Yoshida, Bonsai Gardener, and Aikido Specialist. Let's take a look at her. Yoshida has only one attack technique. It's the sticky hands, initiative five, and it deals zero damage, even in a combo. It is not as bad as it sounds, and you'll see why in a minute. She has two Defensive techniques, a deflect move, and a direct move. You see the X here on the cards. Here it's X as opening damage, and here it's X as combo damage. And X is a special rule that uh, Yoshida uses. And the X value in her case means that it's the highest value, highest damage value on the opponent's cards. So let's say she plays against Boris Wolfram and he's bold enough to open with a thunderclap. Then X would be 7 damage. Boris might run into trouble there. So uh, using the philosophy of Aikido, you remember the turning the opponent's power against himself. Um, this is what we try to represent here with the X value. So the X value is the damage, the highest damage value on the opponent's cards. She has 3 footwork techniques. You'll recognize X here again, so if she opens up with a lead, she can, let's say she plays Boris and he's bold enough to open with a rush, then X would be 5 damage here, and he would be in trouble once again. Evade does not have the X value, that's simple, a footwork technique, and then she has a priority footwork technique, follow, which has the X value as a combo damage. So you see the trade-off here is, do you want to open with a powerful footwork technique or do you want to save it for a, a combo? Yoshida's token has quite a lot of text on side A. Once you know this text, you flip it, so I'll explain what that says. It says that Kagami is going for a submission hold. So every time she wins the initial card flip, she will also flip this token. And if you can flip it or turn it all the way back to the starting position, she wins the game entirely. So you see, that's why zero damage is not necessarily so bad for her. But as soon as she does not win a round, that means even if it's a tie, the token go, goes back to its starting position. So she has to win four consecutive uh, rounds. You see that the signature combos deal, all deal zero damage. Why is that useful? Well, because if she's able to win with a signature combo, she gets to turn this or rotate this token twice instead of one step. So she can potentially win in the second round of the game if she opens with her hip throw, and then gets another signature combo off in the second round of the game. I've seen that happening. I think that playing Yoshida is a ton of fun. 
she's really about this uh, Jedi mind trick, mind reading uh, aspect of the game. And if you can master that, if you're good at reading your opponent, this is a very, very rewarding character uh, to play and a very frustrating character to play against because she can pull off a victory pretty much out of the blue. Her deck has dwindled down to pretty much nothing and you're in the lead and then poof, all of a sudden you run into two second combos and you lost the game. So, so if you're good at mind reading, this is probably the character you want to uh, play. She can also win by using her X mechanic, especially if she faces off against the stronger opponents like uh, Stomp or uh, Boris Wolfram. Then uh, that X mechanic is, uh, can actually deal quite a lot of damage. For example, if she runs into Stomp's Earthquake, remember it's a 10 card damage uh, uh, or 10 damage cards, you can do 30 damage in a combo, which is the highest in the game. So, but of course, Stomp can just not play his uh, Earthquake card up front. But it's a bold move to try. So let's go to the snow-covered mountains of Norway for some fast-paced Taekwondo. Snowstorm is up next. Snow has 26 attack cards, distributed over three different techniques. She has her fast kick, with an initiative of 8. It deals 1 damage as an opener and X damage uh, as a combo. And X in Snow's case means the position in the combo sequence. Meaning if you play it as a second card, X equals 2. If you play it as a third card in a combo, X equals 3. If you play it as a fourth card, it's 4. And if you play it as a fifth and final card, it's 5 damage. So. You have to, or you want to, play the card as late as possible, so to speak, in the combo string for maximum damage. She has her regular kick, initiative 6, it's 2 damage as an opener, and then uh, the combo damage is once again X, so that's the same as the first card. And she has power kick, you see it does not combo into anything, it's 3, as, three damage as an opener, and again X. She has one defense technique, it's evade. It sets up the fast kick and a couple of footwork techniques and zero damage. She has three footwork techniques, all dealing zero damage, but used to string her attacks together. She has a spin move that sets up both the kick, the regular kick, and the uh, and the fast the fast kick and the regular kick. She has bounce sets up kick, and then she has leap, a priority move that sets up all three attack uh, techniques. So if we look at Snow's signature combos, you see she has a switch stance combo that deals zero damage, but uh, it allows her to flip this power token. And let's talk about the power token. Um, there's actually some text here missing on, this is a prototype uh, copy, so there's some text missing. What I just explained before, that X equals the position the card has in a combo sequence. So that should be here on side A and it should also be here on side B. But when you play the switch stand technique, you switch stance. So she goes from her frostbite stance to her avalanche stance. In her frostbite stance, you see her red cards are plus one initiative. So she's actually a bit faster than what we saw before if, as long as she's in her frostbite stance. That is very helpful if she's fighting, uh, let's say Grace Lee, then her fast kicks will will uh, also be initiative 9. But uh, against some fighters you will not have any use for this uh, plus one initi initiative. So you can switch her stance and go into the avalanche stance. And in her avalanche stance, her power kicks, they will deal triple damage. So remember that X is the position in the combo sequence. So if you play the power kick as the fifth and final card of your combo, it's five damage times three. So a power kick can be 15 damage in one card. The rest of her signature combos are, she has a tornado kick that can be powered up for 10 damage and you have, she has a, a classic Taekwondo uh, uh, stunt kick, at 720 triple kick, where she actually she kicks three times before she hits the ground again. So what we wanted to do with Snow is have this Taekwondo fighting style come through and if you watch Taekwondo you see it's uh, a lot of spins and kicks. Uh, that are strung together for fantastic combos. And uh, the same goes for Snow. You want to do long combo strings and, and, and play your attack cards at the, at the far end of it. That's how you maximize your, maximize your damage. So her footwork techniques and her evasions are really used to 
to make uh, good combo strings. Uh, she's a bit tricky to play uh, because if you don't get the combo strings right, she will deal almost no damage. And uh, it can be a little frustrating to new players uh, when they first play Snow, they say, ah, there's no way of dealing damage with her. But if you play your combos right, if you save up the right cards and, and use them in the right way, and you activate your avalanche stance and, and make sure to play a power card or power kick as a fifth card, she's an awesome fighter. Now, let's look at Samoan sumo wrestler, Taylor Stomp Manawa. Stomp has two attack techniques. He has a lift up with an initiative of three, so that's not very fast and it deals zero damage, but it uh, combos into some, uh, some pretty mean cards. Otherwise, he has an earthquake where he comes jumping in with his uh, 400 plus pounds. It combos into nothing and it's the slowest card in the game, but it's 10 damage. Then he has quite an arsenal of blue cards, a lot of soak cards, where he's just laughing off the punches coming in. <laughs> and it combos into the lift up, the earthquake, and another and a footwork technique, but it's zero damage, obviously. He has a squeeze, can be used up front to ward off an incoming attack, or you can use it in a combo and it combos off of itself for four damage, so a couple of squeezes strung together is not bad. He has three footwork techniques, a charge, that is zero damage, but if he speeds up and combos it into itself, it's four damage, so he can string together multiple charges, much like uh, the rush of Boris Wolfram, but not quite as effective. He has sumo squat, zero damage, but a good combo card, and then he has pancake dive, Eight damage if you can use it in a combo. If we look at Stomp's uh, signature combo sheet, you'll see that he has three combos. As usual, he begins with this one in his hand, the pile driver, but obviously not with the Moxie version. And you also notice that all of his combos begin with blue and they end with the Earthquake card. So his Earthquake card is, is also vital in his um, combos. The second combo is a bit special, it's called War Dance, and you see it deals zero damage, but what it does is it allows him to flip his power token. So once you perform the Samoan War Dance, whoom, you go into side B and now we have Earthquake Warning, so plus six damage for his Earthquake card. So that's 16 damage up front and 10 in a combo. That hurts. And finally has a Rolling Thunder combo for 14 damage. Stomp is really fun to play if you're the kind of player that don't mind taking a, a little damage because Stomp will take damage. His attack cards are so slow that you will never really win a, a attack card versus attack card flip. So you have to uh, build up a combo and accept taking damage and then but when you when you hit with your cards, man, that's satisfying. He can do uh, the pancake dive for eight damage into a couple of squeezes or yeah and when you lift off, off uh, people off the ground even if it's zero damage you just know that there's trouble coming after that and hitting with the earthquake card up front 10 damage or 16 damage with the earthquake warning nothing beats that finally let's discuss the wrestler Gakir Bako Gakir has two attack moves he has his elbow with an initiative of 5 3 2 damage not a super good card, but decent. He has a hammer fist, initiative two and five three damage. So you see, it's a, it's a, it's a poor version of uh, Boris's thunderclap. But uh, you'll see why it can be more effective in a bit. He has a block card, zero damage, and he has a priority card, priority blue card, wrestle that also deals zero damage. But it's a very very important card in his deck as you'll see in a bit. He has two footwork techniques. He has a mount and a priority roll, both of them dealing zero damage. So if we look at Gakir Bako's signature combos, you'll see they all start with his priority yellow card. But let's talk about the special power first. Gakir is a wrestler. So he actually has a negative 
power here on his A side of the card. It says poor blocker. So whenever he takes damage, he takes an additional two damage because he's not very good at blocking when he's standing up. But when he plays a wrestle card, when he opens with a wrestle card and he wins the round, he immediately flips this token and uh, it represents him dragging his opponent to the ground. So now they're wrestling and this is his favorite place to be. And now if you're his opponent, you're in trouble because when you're on the ground here with Gakir Bako, he's immune to damage and his red cards deal triple damage and he can now play his uh, signature combos. Side A says he's not allowed to play his signature combos. So he's a poor blogger, not allowed to play signature combos. But when he wrestles you to the ground, you're in big trouble. He can use his signature combos and his cards deal three times the damage. So a hammer fist opener is 15 damage up front. So what happens if you win a round against Bako on the ground, you break free from his clutches and you're back up standing. So every time he wins the, uh, with a wrestle card, you'll go back to the ground. So his signature combos are, he has a heel hook and an arm bar, each for 12 damage, and then he has the triangle choke. So if you can, it's a bit tricky to make because you need two roll cards. But if you can pull that off, it's 25 damage. Usually it means you're ending the game right there. So how do you play Gakir Bako? Well, first of all, you have to be patient. Uh, your arsenal of attack moves is not super powerful when you're standing up. Opponents will know that, so they will not be too afraid of playing their footwork techniques. Well, you might hit them with an elbow or even a hammer fist, but it's not going to do a lot of damage. The hammer fist is, well, it's five damage, but it can't combo. The elbow is only three or two damage, and uh, they're, they're, they're quite difficult to string together. So footwork techniques will not... He has a hard time punishing footwork techniques. Of course, if your opponent does it throughout the game, eventually you will win. But what you want to do with Baku is you want to time your wrestle cards. This card is the key to winning with this guy, but it's also difficult to play them without showing. So uh, a good Gakir Baku player will simply play his elbow cards, his hammer fists, do some blocks, and he'll take some damage, and then boom! Perfect timing, you do your wrestle card and you have a hammer fist ready in your hand so you can combo into that for a 9 damage. And then from there you can do 25 or 15 the next round. So, uh, and the poor Baku player will signal his wrestle cards all the time and then you'll lose miserably. So don't do that. But he's fun to play if you know how to do it. So hopefully this brief overview of the different fighters in Combo Fighter gives you an idea of how they how they all play. As you see they are each fighter is highly asymmetrical and the key to being a good combo fighter is knowing your own fighter but also uh, knowing your opponent. And uh, some fighters will have harder matchups against certain fighters and easier matchups against other fighters. But uh, it's possible to uh, to pull off a win against no matter who you're fighting. So, uh, hope you learned some. If you have some questions, please let us know and we'll try to answer them. So, uh... <laughs>